Last month, Nintendo and Ubisoft invited me to attend an exclusive launch event for Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, the latest entry in their surprisingly great tactical shooter series. There, I of course got to play the game, chat with some of the developers, and even meet Chris Pratt, er, Mario. But I also got the opportunity to interview legendary video game music composer Grant Kirkhope. Kirkhope, best known for his work on games like Banjo-Kazooie and GoldenEye, has recently lent his talents to the Mario and Rabbids games, and they sound great. During our short time together, I asked him about the power of video game music, his legacy in the industry, what it was like to return to Banjo-Kazooie for Smash Ultimate, and even how he feels about gamers' divided reaction to 2017's rare tribute ukulele, which he helped write music for. He gave me some interesting answers, including some strong words for the current generation of players. Enjoy. Uh, so Grant, um, over the last few years, uh, one of the most popular avenues for live music has been video game music. Right. Uh, we've seen the Undertale concert in Japan, uh, the video game live series. Uh, why do you think that video game music is doing so well in the live music space right now? I just think it's just like a massive force. I just feel like it's you know, it's really... Over, when I think after leaving Rare and moving to America, that's when I first realized how big it was getting. And like, you know, it's just like, I feel like, I feel like video game music has introduced a whole new generation to just instrumental music. And I feel like before that, it was like kids are normally you know, pop music like I was a pop music when I was a kid, you know. I feel like, but listening to like just, or, just instrumental music or even just orchestral music, I think kids are really getting it. Like my son, he's 20 now, his playlist like just video game tunes. He doesn't like any popular music. I mean, you know, I, I, at all. And it's not unusual. I feel like it's just, because people sit and play games for hours and the music's over and over and over again. Maybe it's just submission that we get browbeaten into it. But you know, you hear a pop song on the radio, whatever, you know, kind of thing, it's there and gone. But video game tunes, people listen to those tunes, oh, and like when you hear that tune, it brings back that memory of you playing the game with your parents, perhaps, or your friends, or like the golden eye, you sat in your bedroom together, or, or playing Mario Rabbids, but you know, it just brings it back. So I really feel like it's, I just think it's just gonna go like that. And I think, I think you, the point you made about classical music is especially right. Uh, it's amazing how much uh, of Indian music, even if it's not necessarily in the classical style, gets ported over for live. Uh, yeah, live totally, and totally. People totally go for it. Yeah, Absolutely. and also I feel, I feel like when they go to the concerts, right, it's almost like a rock concert in a way, because mm. everyone's shouting, they're all having a great time. It's not highbrow. Yeah. Sometimes with the classical music, it finds a bit of highbrow. And I also feel like, like friends of mine were saying that you know that kids say to the mums and dads, "Can you take me to the symphony, please?" And they're like, "What?" You want to go to the symphony because it's a video game concert. Yep. And so they might end up getting into some classical music because it's orchestral music anyway, right? And it, you know, that they might you know get the crossover and all that. I kind of feel like, I think the sky's the limit. I, so I, I can only imagine how many uh, jazz fans I would learn out of Persona 5, especially. Yeah, no, yeah, no totally. Yeah, my, I think my son picked up on that. Like, I think that, you know, because video game music contains all the styles of everything, you can you can pick much anything from, from video game music, like metal or jazz or pop or whatever you want to call it. It's all there. Right? So, uh, talking specifically about Mario and Rabbit, um, how has the work you've done in this game uh, different from other games you've worked on? Hopefully, it's better. <laughs> like, I really feel like um, like Davide Soliani is the creative director, and Ramal Brio, who's the audio director. Um, between the three of us, we're the, we're the kind of kind of music hub, I suppose. You know, so um, we kind of Davide was very insistent about everything in the game has to be better. And I know that everybody says that about the next game, right? But it really honestly is, it's a real step up in that this game is so much a step up from the last game. In every aspect, the animation, the character drawing, the programming, everything, the music, the sound effects, it's just better. When you play it, you'll get that whole thing. And also I feel like the music gets quite cinemat cinematic, no, cinematic, okay, the right word. like movie-esque at some points. Uh, and so I, I think that we really had that step up. So we do have like some really great moments that are really cinematic, that are, um, you would get in a movie, you know. I'm not saying movies are better, I'm not. But I'm saying that it's something you wouldn't expect in a game that you would think would be, be this humorous thing. It's, it's not that kind of little superficial thing. It's a very deep, it's a very deep story. It's got a great arc. There's some nasty bits, you know, it's got, and, you know, it's a very, Davide's got a great storyteller. And I feel like it's got that really great arc and the music goes with it. So we have to be dark in some spots and light in some spots. And I feel like the, being light is an easy an easy target because it's a Mario or Rabbids game. But in the darker parts, people maybe don't expect that. Yeah. And I feel like it's a, it's the, super, the music. I'm super proud of the music. Me, me and Yoko Shimomura and Gareth Coker did it all together. And I feel like 
Davide pushed us super hard. And I kept saying, how's this Davide? No, get on, it's a crap, a crap. So like, you know, I had to do it over and over and over. And so um, it, was, it was a lot harder than the last game, but super enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and it's talking about the way that, well, Mario just appeared randomly over there. Yeah, he is. Uh, Talking specifically about um, the, the variety of music in this game, you know, obviously you've done a massive amount of work throughout your career, but I think there's some people when they think of oh, Grand Theft Auto style, that you know, they think of, they think all the way back to Banjo Kazooie, they right. think of the very light, the very, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the marimbas, the, the very, right. very um, uh, melodic. Do you feel that um, you, you're ever sort of constrained by uh, what people's image of your music is? Sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes you get a bit typecast. Because you know, also, you've got, to think, you've got to think to yourself, how lucky you are that you are in a game that people remember, so you get typecast for it. Like, you know, lot, lots of people don't ever make a game that anybody remembers. So for me, if I get remembered for anything at all, I'm grateful for that for that memory. So, you know, people like Banjo, fantastic. People like Mario Rabbids, fantastic. People like, well, I did World well, of Warcraft a couple of years ago, or Civilization, or I did some Minecraft stuff. You know, it's like, if they like me for anything, if one person in the world likes something that came out of my head, that's fantastic to me. I always think as an any artist of any persuasion, you made one thing and somebody else gets it, that's amazing. Never mind a few people, that's amazing. Oh, and then also on, on the note about Banjo-Kazooie, uh, a few years ago, uh, you returned to Banjo-Kazooie's music for Super Smash Brothers. Right. Um, what was it like returning to the old score? Uh, did, did, you, did you cringe and shame? Did you think it was as, as great as, as you remembered it being? What was it like? I don't think I ever thought it was great. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, that, not that conceited. I just did my best at the time. I mean, it was so nice to get asked back. I mean, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, I think I was, a, I was the first Western guy to get asked to do a smash track, right? And I mean, that's a massive honor. I mean, because the, the Japanese guys always do the remixes, and they're fantastic. And I was kind of thinking, why do you need me? Like, you, you're going to, whatever I do, you're going to do better than I am, you know? And so they sort of said to me, do what you like any piece you want, and I just ha have to pick Spiral Mountain, and the background is Spiral, and they didn't tell me that, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's complete fluke. And they were like, just go crazy. They were super, super nice, you know. Uh, Mr. Sakura, Sakura is like, I don't know his name. He can't, speak, he, can't, he can't speak great English, but he can't communicate to another guy. Super nice, you know, and I think that they just, you know, I was massively honored for stars to ask me to do that. And all the other remixes are brilliant. I think about the mind by a long shot. Like, you know, I know you can do some remixes for that. I'm like, just brilliant. Um, uh, so one of the uh, games that um, you did the music for a few years ago um, was Ukulele. Right. Um, and so I was wondering, um, you know, that game when it came out um, was very much built up as like a, a tribute to the rare games of the 90s. Right. Um, and when it came out, it did have a bit of a divided fan reaction. Um, how do you feel about that reaction from the fans? You know what, I was a little bit disappointed. And I think that, I feel like people had forgotten how to play a platform game. Like you don't know where you're going. Like in Banjo, you wandered about, you had no idea, you know, like Terry Dachi Land in Banjo Tui. I didn't know where I was going, man, I worked on it. So I kind of feel like people have kind of forgotten about platformers or not. They don't actually point you, you know, they don't lead you by the, by the hand. So I felt like people have forgotten about that. So they're kind of going, oh, we don't know where to go, we don't know what to do. That's the whole point of it, right? You have to discover stuff. So that was a bit of a letdown. And I kind of feel like, I think it's a good game. And it did sell well in the end. It was just they got a bit of a negative reaction at the start, a little bit. But I think once people picked it up and played it, especially on the Switch version, yep. that was fantastic. And I mean, I think that people got it then. So I think the game's kind of got a bit like that. Yeah. So it has done well now. Yeah, it's, it's needed some time to settle in with fans who may have been expecting something completely different. Yeah, and also, and also when you say it's a Banjo Kazooie successor, people are going to expect Banjo Kazooie, really. Yeah, so I think that's a bit hard. So. I thought it did a good job. And it was all the old male friends, they're still there. The old male from the banjo team, a lot of them are, you know. So I feel like that was just one of those things. And you know, you expect a bit of a backlash, so I think, I think I go for the territory. But I feel like a little bit let down at the start. Just because of some of the fan reactors, a bit like, oh, we're not, we're not what we want. But we can't make banjo because that's another game, right? We just do our best. So. And just last, one last little thing. Um, so uh, this is uh, your latest game premiere. Um, is there anything coming out in the future that you want people to look forward to that you've worked on? I can't say yet. No, I can't say yet. Same old, same I, old thing, right? That's about what I expected. I know. All right, guys, thank you very, very much. Nice to meet you. I'll be back. You too.